How do we find purpose amid uncertainty? That's the question we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Today, we have an amazing and beautiful woman of faith. Her story is one that will inspire you to find purpose in your seasons of uncertainty so that you can flourish. Her name is Grace Wabuki Klein, and she's a speaker and author of the newly released book, Flourish, Finding Purpose in the Unknown and Unexpected Seasons of Life. Love that title. She and her husband lead Focus 412, a ministry that helps churches throughout the country. Welcome, Grace. I am so delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you, Tina. It's so great to be with you and everybody that's listening. I'm totally honored to be here today. Now we are going to move on into the second portion of our conversation with Grace Wabuki Klein and her amazing testimony. And from that, her amazing message. Grace, can you talk to us about some practical ways that the Lord held you in his arms during the times when you were experiencing persecution, uh, oppression, or you're experiencing loneliness in the midst of that uncertain season? How did God hold you steadfast in your faith? Yeah, that's so good. You know, when you're going through a heartache or a struggle, or you can feel so isolated and alone, and that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be like, nobody else sees me or hears me. And we either go through a cave into a cave of depression, you know, or we put our life on hold saying, I'll do this when fill in the blank, when I get married, I have kids, when the kids are out of the house or, you know, whatever it may be. But you know, the word says, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. And so I was determined not to live a miserable life. You know, I, I had seen because I'd been in ministry, I was an associate pastor for 16 years. And I saw how some people just rushed into marriage to make things happen or rushed into, I want to have a baby, and, you know, and, and, and then I saw how people, um, sometimes regretted those decisions. And I realized it's much better to be a happy single than an unhappy married. There are lots of unhappy married. And so I decided I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my life to the fullest, like Jesus said, and went out and just ex enjoyed my life. I invested in real estate. I did, you know, a couple of different degrees, traveled the world, cooking classes, dance classes, to live this life that Jesus died, you know, and um, rose again, that we might have life. And, and so cultivating my relationship with the Lord um, through leading, leading Bible studies, you know, being active in my church, um, and super important was serving others. I found that as you focus on others and being a blessing to them, it really takes the focus off of ourselves. And there were so many things that I did over those two decades. You know, I write about it in one of the chapters, but it really could be a series because it was so many years, but it was like serving families, serving other single moms. You know, when I didn't have any gifts under my Christmas tree, because I didn't have a husband or kids to buy them for, I was like, what's the, who's the family that I can bless who maybe doesn't have money right now? to buy gifts for their kids. So I gave them a check so that they could go and bless their kids. And I can't tell you how fulfilling it was and things like that, where, you know, we were just all in tears as, as you allow the Lord to use you to be his hands and feet, to be a blessing to others. There's nothing more fulfilling than that. And that's how we walk in purpose. That's how we flourish um, by doing as Jesus did, loving one another. And so I don't know if I answered your question. I feel like I just started preaching there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that because it does answer the question in the sense that you're saying a season of uncertainty is not necessarily a season of stagnation. Mm -hmm. You ask God, what do you have for me to do yes. now? Not just, I think we often in those seasons of uncertainty want to know what we're supposed to do next. Yeah. And forget to ask God to show us where are we now and what exactly. would you like me to do now? Sometimes it's sit at his feet and learn and listen and soak yes. and heal. But yeah. other times, like you said, you're also serving. 
in yeah. those spaces. It may be small areas that you're serving in, but yeah. you are still growing in your faith, your spirituality, and your purpose during the season of uncertainty. Is that kind of what your answer uh, would be? Yes, you summarize it so well. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so moving forward with other things that we can do in seasons of uncertainty, you mentioned that your parents prayed through scripture and that was how they felt God's protection in a season that wasn't just uncertain. It was actually physically incredibly dangerous for them. So when yeah. people are going through persecution and danger and risk, whether it's health risk, financial risk, or actual risk of their lives, yeah. what kind of steps in praying through yeah. scripture and leaning on faith would you recommend to help yeah. them stay strong? Yeah, no, that's so good. Um, so I, in, in the book, use analogy of trees a lot. And um, somebody was asking me, how did you come up with that? Well, I moved from California to um, Birmingham, Alabama, shortly after my husband and I got married and just love seeing the changing seasons. And so just to set context before answering your question is um, the book is divided into four seasons. So fall, winter, spring, and summer. And fall is about letting go of things in your head, your heart, and your hands that may be keeping you stuck. So certain ways of thinking, um, things in your heart, like unforgiveness, pride and comparison um, and things in your hands, like the tithe or maybe something that God is asking you to let go of. So that's fall. Winter are the struggles and the trials, the waiting, the heartache, the pain that we all go through. And, um, and then spring is being open to the new thing that God has for us. Cause a lot of times it does not look like what we prayed for. And then summer is a time of celebration. Um, as we thank God for what he has answered our prayers, um, reflection on what we've learned along the way, and then helping others. So in the winter, which is what you were describing those, those times of heartache and, you're like, how do I continue to stand essentially? And I love to think about how with a tree, when a seed is planted so often, we don't see what is happening. It's dark if you're underground. Um, it seems like nothing is happening, but slowly they're developing roots and, uh, and then a stem begins to grow towards the sun. And so we can develop roots during those dark times by being in the word, whether it is reading the word ourselves, sometimes it's so we're in so much pain that we can't even see the word through our tears. And that's when I just have a, an app that can read scripture over you. So powerful to just hear a voice um, of, of scripture speaking that truth over you. Another thing is, um, is worship. Um, I found for myself, it's been very helpful when I've created a playlist in certain seasons, like these are the songs that I'm standing on because they're declaring truth over this situation. I had a playlist for this book as I was writing it because <laughs> it's a walk of faith, you know? And so it's just songs that are just testifying of God is more than able. We're not doing things in our own strength, you know? And so um, having songs that you listen to, a community, I've alluded to that before, you have got to be in a faith-based community. We were not meant to walk this road alone. And so much of who I am is because of the people that were speaking into my life as small group leaders. I can tell you, you ask me any age, and I can tell you either which small group I was leading or which one I was in. Like that's how passionate I am ever since junior high. Um, you've got to have that community of people. And out of that comes what I call the 3 a.m. friends. The 3 a.m. friends are the friends that you can call exactly at three o'clock in the morning and they will answer the phone when you are, you know, just everything just hit the ceiling and, you know, you just lost a loved one, whatever it may be. And they will either, they will sit there with you. If you just need to sit and cry, there'll be a shoulder to cry on. They will, you know, encourage you. They'll pray for you when you can't feel like praying and you don't feel like praying. And, um, and so people say, well, how do I find those? You know, uh, well, you, you do, you do that for somebody else and you find people, there's people hurting all over the place and in the church community, join a small group. And as you become that for somebody, you'll find that they'll be that for yourself. And so those are just some of the things as far as when I talk about developing roots like a tree, it's the prayer, it's the worship, it's the it's the small group and being in, in a in a faith community, going to church, 
um, it makes a difference. And um, it's it's how I survived the winter season. And I believe that's how the trees, you know, the wind comes and they might sway, but they, they stay grounded, you know, and that's how we stay grounded, having people who will link arms um, and say, all right, we're in this with you. We may not have the answers. We may not know why God is allowing this, why this affair happened, why the mayor's carriage happened, but we are linking arms with you and we're not going to let you go. Woo, friends like that. It's worth everything in the world. Now, there may be times when we're in a winter season, as you call it, when we're in complete isolation, where we don't have that circle of support. And God may use that time to deepen our roots, but we're yeah. not meant to stay in that forever. Just yes. like Elijah was by the brook by himself for a time, there was a time when God called him away from the brook back yeah. into community. So we need to always, if we're in that season, be listening for when God is leading us back into community from that season, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I cried out to God um, for many years is why is it taking so long for you to answer my prayer? And um, through that season of just leaning into him, that was just me and him just going before the Lord, sitting in his presence and just um, drawing closer to him, um, sometimes just in silence, you know. Um, just saying, Lord, I need you. Uh, but it's through that, that my relationship with the Lord grew stronger. And the Lord didn't answer that prayer until after I got married, Tina. And I said, God, why do some people wait two years? And I waited two decades. Like, what was up with that? And, um, you know, he clearly said to me, Grace, do you want a faith that is two years deep or two decades deep? And my friends, those of you who may be listening, that's when I got it. There are some things that can only be developed through the struggle, through the heartache, through the pain. He was making me more like him. My faith is strong. And so as I sat with him, yes, like exactly what you're saying. There's some seasons which it's just me and God, you know, um, and out of that, my relationship with him is so much stronger. And the things that he developed in me to become more like him is through those times of uncertainty and struggle and pain. I want to ask a quick question about the spring season and uh -huh. when what blooms is not what you expected. And it doesn't yeah. look like the answer to prayer that you thought you were getting. That can also be a season of uncertainty where yeah. you are very afraid and you don't know what to do with the harvest that God has given you. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. I've lived that plenty of times because I'm a planner <laughs> and I'm a list maker. <laughs> and if you remember way back in the day, there used to be this toy called an Etch-a-Sketch where you could draw a picture and then you shake it and then it goes away. I feel like I've had plenty of those with me and the Lord because I plan so much. But one of the things that really taught me to trust him was when I was um, going out to buy my first home and I had a list of what I wanted at the top was a view because the home I grew up with had a beautiful view of the valley. And I was like, that's exactly what I need. Well, when I was touring the um, different homes in this particular city, just to kind of know, um, under, understand the city, I decided to check out this particular house, but I wasn't really interested because of curb appeal was not my type. But the minute I walked in, I felt such a peace of God that I never felt in any other house we looked at. And so uh, what I realized is that I thought I needed the view, but the Lord knew that I needed a safe haven. You see, this house was only one of two houses on a cul-de-sac, and God knew that as an introvert, I needed a place to come home and just absolutely decompress after being with thousands of people over the weekend. So after that, Tina, I just submitted to the Lord um, my list for a husband, because you can imagine my list for a house was like one page for a husband. It was like four pages, double, you know, column, all of that. And I submitted it to the Lord, a blank piece of paper. And I say, God, you know me more than I know myself. You know exactly what I need. And I trust you. Now, this isn't like a blank sheet of paper, like, is he breathing type of thing? Like not in that desperation, but a complete total surrender. And um, I would never have guessed the man that he brought 
for me. I would always say I wanted the chocolate bald head man of God. Well, my husband is white chocolate, uh, lots of hair, and uh, but God knew he is the greatest gift and has loved me and brought healing in areas that I didn't even knew, know needed healing. I mean, the Lord really knew. And so for anyone who may be in that season of uncertainty and God is asking you to meet, maybe step out and do something new or to just be open to something that he's wanting to do in your life. You can trust him. He created you and he knows you more than you know yourself. So you can trust that he has your best interests at heart and he will never leave you nor forsake you as his word promises. So you can trust him in this time of uncertainty. I imagine that you have faced even more trials and uncertain times as a biracial couple. So has that faith foundation really helped you through marriage issues where you're facing a culture that is not necessarily an easy one to deal with? Yeah, it's so funny. When when we were moving here, I literally had friends like, you're going where? and uh, like blink if you're okay, like when they would call me, or do you need a safe word? Are you, I mean, because a lot of, you know, California friends, we have the um, the image of Alabama from the 60s, right? And so I can, I'm grateful that people have um, welcomed, welcomed us graciously here, and we're part of a great church, a great community. Um, but I can say, because we travel a lot, um, we are received differently in different settings. And so some, you know, where we get glares um, and people just glaring at us, like you can cut it with a knife. Um, to others where we've been in the middle of a city and some young girls and we're like, we just want to uh, hug you. You give us such joy seeing the two of you together. And so uh, we get we get it all. Um, but here's the thing. We don't let it throw us off kilter because we know. I, I get used to it first, though, because at first I was like, oh, you don't know the heartache and how long I waited for this and how dare you glare at me. Let me tell you. And my husband would be like, Grace, that's a complete stranger, <laughs> um, you know, because they don't know the pain and the, and the heartache. But I had to learn to just be like, that's their inner issue that they have going on. I know that this is um, God's greatest gift to me, my answer to prayer. And I'm just gonna like live my life. Just like I said from years ago. Um, but it was an adjustment at first. Cause I wasn't used to, um, you know, uh, complete strangers treating me as such. Um, when here's like something that I have been like, I want to celebrate, you know, it was not pretty, you know, and so anyway, I think it really just goes back to knowing who you are and, um, and that being grounded in that versus what other people are thinking and saying of you. And your foundation in forgiveness as a young yeah. child that you learned from your family, you were able yeah. to actually draw from that into your own experiences where you needed to apply forgiveness so you can live in freedom in yeah. that place of uncertainty as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's like, it's an ongoing thing for all of us, right? You know, um, and it's a daily decision saying, Lord, I surrender to you. You have my life. Use me for your will. And um, I'm just going to release these things to you, as I talk about in the fall, <laughs> letting go of the things in the heart so that they don't um, prevent us from operating and experiencing all that God has for us. Um, I think there's that famous quote that walking in unforgiveness is drinking poison and expecting the person to, who hurt you to be affected. But in reality, it's us who gets affected. So exactly what you're saying, letting go of that and not let it fester in your heart. Hmm, I love that your name is Grace. You so live up to that name. And I know that everyone listening can be doubly blessed if they continue to connect with you and get more of your powerful words, more of your testimony, more of your mentorship. How can people stay connected with you and get a copy of your new book? Oh yeah. So my book Flourish, Finding Purpose in the Unknown and Unexpected Seasons of Life is available at 
all the online retailers. So Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, take your pick. And um, and then you can stay, I would love to stay connected with you um, on socials, um, Grace Wabuki Klein. And my website is also Grace Wabuki Klein. So I'd love to hear from you what you do in times of uncertainty. I hope that all of you listening were inspired and will continue to connect with this powerful, amazing woman of faith, Grace Wabuki Klein. And of course, I also hope that you will subscribe and come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.